In this test, we are going to be comparing two beastly computers. This is my very own you're watching right now, which is a Stormforce PC. In fact, they both are actually. This is my 10900K RTX 3090. It's the very PC that powers all of my videos. And I get asked all the time, what do I use? Well, it is actually a computer by Stormforce, which is a UK brand. And uh, I just trust them. I think they're absolutely fantastic. And the quality is superb. So let's have a look at the AMD system we're going to be pitting it against, which in this case is a Ryzen 9 5900X running an RX 6900 XT GPU. And also, before I forget, Stormforce are offering this channel a discount code. If you are interested in a new PC, go check their range out. Right, okay, I think it's now time to get into the test. Oh, look at those beautiful lights. Anyway, right, getting distracted. So here we are, London City. On the left is the 10900K RTX 3090 machine. And on the right, of course, is the AMD system. Now, what seems immediately obvious to me is the AMD system is being held back by the GPU. As you can see there, actually, it is being limited by the GPU, which is really interesting. And actually, I'm really excited to say that Stormforce is allowing me to try my RTX 3090 in the AMD system. And that will be the next test. And I think that will be very interesting indeed especially when you consider that the performance levels here on this test are very, very close. But don't just get hung up on those frame rate numbers because actually it's how it feels in VR. That's the most important thing here. And I have to say that really that RX 6900 XT does not handle motion reprojection very well indeed. And even when I disable it completely, just the stuttering on the ground is very evident. I think part of that is due to the frame timing, but also because the Nvidia drivers are definitely better supported and updated more frequently. Right, anyway, let's head to New York with full photogrammetry, the lot. In fact, here are my settings. Just show you them quickly. That's what I'm running with both systems, of course. Everything I've kept the same as much as I possibly can, okay? <laughs> and actually, to be honest, the Intel system, when I was recording this, it was on a really hot day. So, you know, everything's pretty much against the Intel, but uh, it seems to still be, as you can see here, as we take off bound for New York, nice and low, about three frames ahead. And in actually some cases, I've noticed about nine frames per second ahead, okay? Which is quite a shocker. So really, you know, as I've said, the really main takeaways here is that don't just focus on the frame rate numbers. It's more about the frame timing and the fact that whilst in VR, which obviously I can't show you unless you experience it yourself, the actual stuttering of the terrain is in some cases uh, definitely a lot worse than the 10900K. And I do feel some of this is partly to do with that beastly RTX 3090. It just can handle higher resolution headsets a lot more. So before our final test, we'll just fly nice and low over the Statue of Liberty. You can see that the frame rate is very close, but the Intel just edges it by a smidge. <laughs> so here we are back in the UK again. This is the Just Flight Turbo Arrow. We're at Pilot Plus Oxford, same weather same sim update which is five again and this is just my system at the moment 40 frames per second now I'm going to bring the AMD system and there we go 37 frames to about 39 so it's still that sort of two frames to three frames deficit there for the AMD but remember it's not all about frame rate it's not all about what you can see on the screen it's how it feels in VR and I've got to say most definitely the Intel system feels much smoother and is also a lot happier with a Reverb G2, might I add. You have no idea how many problems I've been having with that headset with the AMD system, even with a powered hub and updated BIOS. It just does not want to play ball. I also want to mention quickly before I forget that both systems here are running 16 gigs of RAM. I have now upgraded my uh, RAM um, and uh, yeah, it's made a nice difference actually, but obviously I wanted to keep everything the same for these tests. So as we sort of pan around here, 
at Pilot Plus Oxford. I hope you enjoyed this little test and it's been of some help to you. I think it's pretty obvious that the overall winner is most definitely the Intel machine. However, I would say if you can pick an AMD system of this spec, you know, up for a lot cheaper, then really it's not a bad deal at all because you're getting very good performance. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you all again very soon.